the small town of Elmsworth, the local high school was notorious for its intense hierarchy and relentless bullies. At the top of this social pyramid was Marcus, a senior with a cruel streak that seemed to run as deep as his family's roots in the town. He took particular pleasure in tormenting Jamie, a quiet sophomore who had the misfortune of catching his eye. Jamie, with his ragged clothes and withdrawn demeanor, was an easy target. Marcus, towering and confident, would weave tales of Jamie's supposed misdeeds, turning the entire school against him. Whispered rumors and sharp glances followed Jamie through the hallways, isolating him further each day. One late autumn afternoon, as the trees shed their crimson leaves, Jamie found a note in his locker. Meet me at the old mill tonight. I can make it all stop, it read, unsigned. Desperation overcame fear. Jamie saw no other option but to go. The old mill, a dilapidated structure on the outskirts of town, was the stuff of local legends, rumored to be haunted by the spirits of workers who met tragic ends. As night fell, Jamie approached the mill, its silhouette looming ominously against the starless sky. The air was thick with the scent of decay, and the only sound was the rustling of leaves underfoot. Inside, the mill was shrouded in darkness, save for a faint light flickering in the depths of the building. Jamie hesitated at the entrance, his heart pounding in his chest. Taking a deep breath, he stepped inside, his footsteps echoing in the vast emptiness. As he moved towards the light, the sound of whispers filled the air, growing louder with each step. The whispers were cruel, echoing the taunts of his classmates, of Marcus. Suddenly, the light went out, plunging Jamie into darkness. Whispers crescendoed into a deafening roar, then stopped abruptly. In the silence, Jamie felt a chilling presence behind him. He turned slowly, coming face to face with a figure shrouded in shadows, its features obscured by the darkness. The figure stepped forward, and the faint moonlight revealed Marcus's smirking face. Scared, Jamie? It's just me his voice echoing off the mill's decaying walls. But something was off. Marcus's eyes gleamed with a malevolent light, and the air around him seemed to shimmer with an unnatural chill. Jamie, paralyzed with fear, could sense a deeper darkness behind Marcus, as if he were a puppet controlled by unseen forces. Welcome to my little playground, Marcus sneered gesturing around the mill. You see, my family has a special connection to this place. It's where we draw our strength. And tonight, you're going to help me renew it. Jamie realized with horror that the rumors about the mill were more than just stories. They were warnings. As Marcus advanced, the shadows seemed to stretch and twist forming spectral figures that mirrored his every movement. The air filled with the sounds of distant screams and the grinding of machinery, as if the mill were coming alive with the echoes of its tragic past. Desperate to escape, Jamie turned to run, but found the exit blocked by a swirling mass of shadows. Marcus, with a cruel smile, explained that the mill fed on fear and despair, growing stronger with each victim. He had lured Jamie here to offer him to the mill, to appease the dark spirits that gave the bullies their power. As Jamie backed away, he bumped into a table covered with old, dust-laden objects, photographs of previous victims, twisted pieces of metal from the mill's machinery, and a collection of strange,
glowing stones. Among the detritus, Jamie's eyes caught a glint of something familiar. A pendant that had belonged to his mother, who had disappeared mysteriously years ago. With this discovery, Jamie's fear transformed into fury. He understood now that his family's past was entangled with the mill's dark history and that his mother's disappearance was connected to the bully's sinister rituals. Armed with this new resolve, Jamie decided to confront the evil head-on, not realizing that this night was just the beginning of a terrifying journey that would unveil the true extent of the mill's power and the depths of the bully's depravity. As the standoff between Jamie and Marcus intensified, the mill seemed to pulse with energy, the shadows swirling faster and the whispers growing louder. Jamie, holding his mother's pendant tightly, prepared to delve deeper into the mill's secrets, unaware of the horrors that awaited him in the shadows and the truth about his own legacy that was yet to be revealed. Marcus, reveling in the charged atmosphere, advanced towards Jamie, his figure seeming to merge with the swirling shadows. You see, Jamie, this mill isn't just a building. It's a gateway, a nexus of pain and power, he boasted, his voice resonating with an otherworldly timber. Jamie, clutching the pendant, felt its surface grow warm against his skin, pulsating with a rhythm like a heartbeat. The mill, sensing the presence of the pendant, stirred restlessly, its walls groaning as if waking from a deep slumber. As Marcus prepared to strike, a sudden blaze of light erupted from the pendant, casting a luminous glow over the decrepit interior. The shadows recoiled, and for a moment, Marcus's confidence faltered. The light seemed to weaken the mill's hold on reality, blurring the lines between the physical and the spectral. In this fleeting chaos, Jamie saw his chance. He dashed past Marcus, deeper into the heart of the mill, where the machinery lay silent, and the air was thick with the residue of sorrow and rage. The pendant guided him, its light growing stronger as he approached the core of the building, where the mill's darkest secrets were kept. The machinery around Jamie began to tremble and creak, as if the mill itself was trying to prevent him from uncovering the truth. The air was heavy with the scent of rust and decay and the sound of his footsteps echoed, mingling with the whispers of the past victims, pleading for release. Jamie found himself in a vast chamber, the center of the mill, where a colossal machine covered in runes and symbols stood. This was the heart of the mill, the source of its sinister energy. The machine pulsed with a dark light, synchronized with the pendant's glow, hinting at a connection between Jamie's family and the mill's ancient machinery. Marcus, recovering from the initial shock of the pendant's power, followed Jamie into the chamber. You don't understand what you're meddling with, he shouted, his voice laced with fear and anger. This machine, this mill, it's been the source of our power for generations. Without it, we are nothing. Jamie, standing before the machine, felt a surge of memories flood his mind. Visions of his mother, working secretly to undermine the mill's influence and of ancestors bound to the mill's fate. It became clear that his family had long been entwined in a struggle against the dark forces emanating from this place. As the standoff continued, the mill's energy grew volatile, the machinery shaking violently 
as if on the verge of collapse. Jamie and Marcus, locked in a battle of wills, stood on the precipice of a revelation that would not only decide their fates, but also determine the future of Elmsworth and the dark legacy of the old mill. The mill's machinery, now fully awakened, emitted a cacophony of mechanical screams, its gears grinding as if digesting the anguish it had absorbed over the centuries. The building itself seemed to warp and twist, its very structure contorting under the weight of its corrupted soul. Jamie, with the pendant's light as his shield, navigated through the chaos. His resolve hardened by the revelations of his lineage and the mill's true nature. The pendant, reacting to the proximity of the ancient machine, began to unveil fragmented memories, showing Jamie the pact made by the first of the bullies with the dark forces within the mill, binding their fates to its continued operation. Marcus, now desperate to maintain his family's legacy and power, shouted over the din, You can't stop it, Jamie. The mill is eternal, its hunger insatiable. Your feeble attempts are nothing. Yet, as Jamie approached the heart of the machine, the pendant revealed its final secret, a mechanism to reverse the curse, planted by his mother before her disappearance. She had understood that the mill's power was not invincible, but required a continuous cycle of fear and submission to sustain it. The chamber's center held a pedestal, upon which sat an indentation that perfectly matched the pendant's shape. As Jamie placed the pendant into the slot, a profound silence fell over the mill. The machinery slowed, its ominous glow fading, as if the building itself was holding its breath. Marcus, realizing what was happening, lunged at Jamie in a last-ditch effort to stop him. But he was too late. The pendant, now united with the core of the mill, unleashed a blinding light that coursed through the building, purging the accumulated layers of pain and darkness. The mill's oppressive presence began to dissolve, the shadows retreating as the light restored a semblance of peace to the long-tormented structure. However, the process was not just banishing the darkness. It was also unraveling the very fabric of the mill's existence, threatening to collapse the building entirely. Jamie and Marcus, caught in the midst of the upheaval, faced a new peril as the mill, groaning and shaking, seemed destined to implode. Amidst the chaos, the boundary between the past and present blurred, releasing not only the spirits trapped within the mill, but also revealing the full history of the bully's rise to power and their descent into darkness. As the past and present collided, the fate of Elmsworth hung in the balance, with the outcome of Jamie's and Marcus's struggle set to determine the future of the town and the final legacy of the old mill. The confrontation reached its peak, with the forces unleashed threatening to consume everything, leaving the story on the brink of a catastrophic resolution, the full implications of which were yet to be unveiled. As the mill trembled on the edge of destruction, the very air around Jamie and Marcus crackled with the raw energy unleashed by the pendant's activation. The walls of the mill, once oppressive and confining, now appeared translucent, revealing glimpses of other times and realities, the mill's history playing out in ghostly scenes. Within this maelstrom, 
the spirits of those consumed by the mill's hunger began to emerge, their forms flickering between solidity and mist. They surrounded Marcus, their cries a symphony of anger and sorrow, accusing him and his lineage of their centuries-long torment. Marcus, overwhelmed by the spectral onslaught, found his confidence and cruelty faltering. No, this can't be. We controlled you, he screamed, his voice betraying a panic that he had never known. The spirits, however, seemed intent on reclaiming their stolen peace, circling closer with every word he uttered. Jamie, meanwhile, felt an unexpected connection to the spirits. Rather than menacing him, they imparted flashes of their memories, showing him not just the mill's dark past, but also moments of their lives, their hopes and dreams before they were ensnared by the bullies' malevolence. This connection strengthened Jamie, giving him a deep understanding of the true cost of the mill's existence and the pain it had inflicted. The building itself, now barely holding on to its physical form, groaned under the weight of its collapsing reality. The machinery, once the heart of the mill's dark power, lay silent and inert, its threat neutralized by the pendant's light. In this chaos, a new figure emerged from the shadows, a woman whose strong resemblance to Jamie left no doubt of her identity. His mother, her appearance both a ghostly echo and a vibrant presence, she approached Jamie, her eyes filled with sorrow and pride. You've done what I could not, she whispered, her voice resonating with both love and regret. As she spoke, the mill's destruction accelerated, the building's fabric unraveling faster, its timelines colliding and merging. Jamie, his mother, and Marcus found themselves caught in a vortex of shifting realities where moments from the mill's sinister operations and the bully's cruel reign flashed by in a chaotic whirlwind. Marcus, now realizing the full extent of his family's sins, faced a torrent of guilt and realization. The spirits, sensing his change of heart, began to alter their approach, their anger softening into a quest for justice rather than revenge. The scene was set for a final reckoning, with the mill's fate, the spirit's peace, and the town's future all hanging in the balance. The boundaries between life and death, past and future, were more blurred than ever, setting the stage for a confrontation that would transcend time and reality, promising revelations that could heal the wounds of the past or forever damn the souls caught in the mill's shadow. The vortex of energy and spirits intensified, pulling at the very fabric of the mill and those within it. Jamie, guided by his mother's spirit, navigated through the chaos, his every step a journey through the mill's tormented past. Scenes of sorrow and pain flashed before his eyes, each a piece of the mill's dark legacy, woven into the town's history. Marcus, meanwhile, was confronted by his ancestors, the original architects of the mill's curse. They appeared not as the powerful figures of legend, but as tormented souls, bound to the mill and its sins. They revealed to Marcus the true cost of their ambition the endless cycle of suffering they had initiated, and their eternal imprisonment within the mill's decaying walls. As the mill continued to unravel, the line between the physical and the supernatural became increasingly blurred. The machinery, once a symbol of the mill's power, now lay in ruins, a testament to the destructive nature 
of the bully's legacy. The air was thick with the whispers of the past, each voice a thread in the tapestry of the mill's history. In the heart of the chaos, a clearing formed, a calm eye in the storm of spectral and temporal turmoil. Here, Jamie and Marcus, alongside the spirits of their respective lineages, faced the core of the mill's power, now exposed as a dark, pulsating heart, its rhythm sinking with the pendant around Jamie's neck. Jamie's mother, her form more solid now in the mill's unraveling reality, spoke of a ritual long forgotten that could sever the mill's curse, freeing the spirits and ending the bully's reign. But it required a sacrifice, a willing offering of the darkness that had fueled the mill's heart. Marcus, finally understanding the depth of his family's misdeeds, stepped forward. His decision was not one of heroism, but of redemption. He faced Jamie, his expression one of resignation and resolve. I am the mill's legacy, he said, and I should be its end. Together, Jamie and his mother began the ritual. Their actions guided by the pendant's light and the accumulated wisdom of generations wronged by the mill. The spirits, their forms brightening, gathered around lending their power to the ritual. The mill, sensing its impending doom, convulsed violently, its structure bending and twisting in a final attempt to thwart its own demise. The air was filled with a cacophony of noise, the cries of the spirits mingling with the groaning of the mill. As the ritual reached its climax, the mill's dark heart began to shrink its pulsing growing weaker. Marcus, surrounded by the light of the spirits, offered himself to the heart, his essence merging with the darkness, diluting its power with his newfound understanding and remorse. The mill's final scream echoed through the collapsing reality, a sound of both agony and release the building's physical form started to disintegrate, its substance dissolving into the ether, as the spirits, one by one, found peace and faded into the light. Jamie, with his mother's spirit beside him, watched as the mill's legacy unraveled, the years of pain and fear dissolving with it. The ground where the mill once stood began to heal, the scars of its presence fading from the earth. Yet, even as the mill's physical form vanished, its story was etched in the memory of Elmsworth, a cautionary tale of power, pain, and redemption. And as the new dawn approached, with the last remnants of the mill's presence disappearing, the true impact of its end and the future it would usher in for the town and its inhabitants remained to be seen. As the first light of dawn touched the grounds of the once menacing mill, the town of Elmsworth began to stir. Unaware of the monumental shift that had occurred overnight, the land where the mill had stood was now a serene meadow, a stark contrast to the dark, twisted structure that once dominated it. Jamie, standing amidst the new growth, felt a profound connection to the land, as if the earth itself was communicating a silent gratitude for the mill's demise. His mother's spirit, now a faint but comforting presence, whispered of the healing that was to begin, not just for the land, but for the souls of those ensnared by the mill's dark legacy. The townsfolk, waking to find the mill gone, were initially bewildered. The structure that had been a constant, albeit ominous, part of their landscape was simply no more. Rumors and theories abounded, 
with some speculating about sudden collapses or secret demolitions. But as the days passed, a subtle but undeniable change began to sweep through Elmsworth. The shadow of fear and oppression that had lingered over the town, often attributed to the mill's unseen influence, lifted gradually. Relationships among the townspeople improved. Old grudges seemed less significant, and a new sense of community began to emerge. In the heart of this transformation was Jamie, who, having been at the epicenter of the mill's destruction, became something of an enigmatic figure. His close encounter with the town's dark past and his role in ending it bestowed upon him a quiet respect and an air of mystery. Meanwhile, the disappearance of Marcus and the downfall of the bully's lineage sparked a different kind of speculation. Without their dominating presence, the school's social hierarchy began to dismantle, giving rise to a more inclusive atmosphere where fear and intimidation lost their grip. Yet, beneath this positive exterior, there were undercurrents of something unfinished. Jamie, sensitive to the echoes of the mill's energy, felt a lingering disquiet. He knew that while the physical manifestation of the mill was gone, the essence of the darkness it harbored might still exist, dispersed, but not destroyed. His concerns were confirmed when, in the weeks following the mill's disappearance, strange occurrences began to surface in Elmsworth. Objects moving on their own, unexplained shadows, and whispers in the night hinted at a residual paranormal activity, a reminder that the mill's legacy was not so easily eradicated. Determined to investigate, Jamie delved into the town's archives, uncovering old records and forgotten lore that hinted at deeper, older roots of the mill's power, ones that extended far beyond the bullies and their pact. These discoveries pointed to ancient, perhaps even primordial forces that had been disturbed by the mill's destruction. As Jamie pieced together this puzzle, the town's newfound peace seemed increasingly fragile. The serene meadow where the mill once stood began to exhibit strange phenomena. Plants withering overnight, animals avoiding the area, and a palpable sense of unease pervading the spot. Jamie realized that the mill's end was not a conclusion, but the beginning of a new chapter in Elmsworth's history. The battle against the physical edifice might have been won, but the struggle against the intangible, enduring essence of its dark past was just beginning. His journey, far from over, was evolving into a quest to understand and hopefully contain the remnants of the mill's power before they could coalesce and reignite the cycle of fear and darkness in Elmsworth. As the first light of dawn touched the grounds of the once menacing mill, the town of Elmsworth began to stir. Unaware of the monumental shift that had occurred overnight, the land where the mill had stood was now a serene meadow, a stark contrast to the dark, twisted structure that once dominated it. Jamie, standing amidst the new growth, felt a profound connection to the land, as if the earth itself was communicating a silent gratitude for the mill's demise. His mother's spirit, now a faint but comforting presence, whispered of the healing that was to begin, not just for the land, but for the souls of those ensnared by the mill's dark legacy. The townsfolk, waking to find the mill gone, were initially bewildered. The structure that had been a constant, albeit ominous, part of their landscape 
was simply no more. Rumors and theories abounded, with some speculating about sudden collapses or secret demolitions. But as the days passed, a subtle but undeniable change began to sweep through Elmsworth. The shadow of fear and oppression that had lingered over the town, often attributed to the mill's unseen influence, lifted gradually. Relationships among the townspeople improved. Old grudges seemed less significant, and a new sense of community began to emerge. In the heart of this transformation was Jamie, who, having been at the epicenter of the mill's destruction, became something of an enigmatic figure. His close encounter with the town's dark past and his role in ending it bestowed upon him a quiet respect and an air of mystery. Meanwhile, the disappearance of Marcus and the downfall of the bully's lineage sparked a different kind of speculation. Without their dominating presence, the school's social hierarchy began to dismantle, giving rise to a more inclusive atmosphere where fear and intimidation lost their grip. Yet beneath this positive exterior, there were undercurrents of something unfinished. Jamie, sensitive to the echoes of the mill's energy, felt a lingering disquiet. He knew that while the physical manifestation of the mill was gone, the essence of the darkness it harbored might still exist, dispersed but not destroyed. His concerns were confirmed when in the weeks following the mill's disappearance, strange occurrences began to surface in Elmsworth. Objects moving on their own, unexplained shadows, and whispers in the night hinted at a residual paranormal activity, a reminder that the mill's legacy was not so easily eradicated. Determined to investigate, Jamie delved into the town's archives, uncovering old records and forgotten lore that hinted at deeper, older roots of the mill's power, ones that extended far beyond the bullies and their pact. These discoveries pointed to ancient, perhaps even primordial forces that had been disturbed by the mill's destruction. As Jamie pieced together this puzzle, the town's newfound peace seemed increasingly fragile. The serene meadow where the mill once stood began to exhibit strange phenomena. Plants withering overnight, animals avoiding the area, and a palpable sense of unease pervading the spot. Jamie realized that the mill's end was not a conclusion but the beginning of a new chapter in Elmsworth's history. The battle against the physical edifice might have been won, but the struggle against the intangible, enduring essence of its dark past was just beginning. His journey, far from over, was evolving into a quest to understand and hopefully contain the remnants of the mill's power before they could coalesce and reignite the cycle of fear and darkness in Elmsworth. Jamie, now the unwitting guardian of Elmsworth's fragile peace, felt the weight of his responsibility. The town, while outwardly transformed, teetered on the edge of a hidden abyss, its tranquility a thin veneer over the deeper darkness that lurked beneath. With each passing day, the anomalies grew more pronounced. Pets disappeared, only to return days later with no recollection of their whereabouts. Their eyes haunted as if having witnessed unspeakable horrors. Shadows lengthened and twisted in unnatural ways, forming chilling patterns that seemed to be messages or warnings from an unseen hand. Jamie's research into the town's history led him to ancient legends of a time before the mill, when the land was said to be a battleground 
for forces beyond human comprehension. The mill, it seemed, had been built atop a nexus of ley lines, channels of the Earth's energy that ancient civilizations believed were pathways for spiritual and elemental forces. Realizing the depth of the situation, Jamie sought out the few remaining members of the bully's lineage, hoping to uncover knowledge passed down through their family that could shed light on the current events. He found an unlikely ally in Marcus's cousin, Elena, who had distanced herself from her family's darker legacy. She shared old family documents that hinted at the original pact made with the dark forces, revealing that the mill's construction was intended to harness and control these energies, not just for power, but to maintain a delicate balance. As autumn approached, bringing with it a chill that seeped into the bones of Elmsworth's residents, the disturbances intensified. The meadow where the mill once stood became a focal point of activity. At night, it glowed with an eerie light. And during the day, people reported hearing faint industrial sounds, as if the ghost of the mill was attempting to reconstruct itself. Jamie and Elena, delving deeper into the arcane and esoteric, discovered references to a ritual that could permanently sever the connection between the ley lines and the dark forces that sought to exploit them. As the disturbances in Elmsworth reached their peak, with the phantom mill nearly materialized and the town's reality fraying at the edges, Jamie and Elena realized that time was running out. The ritual they discovered needed to be performed on the night of the autumn equinox, a night where the veil between worlds was thinnest, offering them the best chance to permanently close the portal. The object of sacrifice, they concluded, had to be the pendant that Jamie's mother had used to combat the mill's influence. It was imbued with generations of struggle against the dark forces, carrying the essence of all the lost souls who had suffered because of the mill. Jamie, understanding the cost, prepared himself to part with the last tangible piece of his mother, knowing it was the key to ending the cycle of terror. On the eve of the equinox, the townspeople of Elmsworth, sensing the impending confrontation, gathered at the outskirts of the meadow, their torches casting long shadows. Jamie and Elena, standing in the heart of the meadow, began the ritual. As they chanted the ancient incantations, the ground trembled and the air thickened, charged with unseen energy. The specter of the mill, now almost fully materialized, towered over them, its ghostly machinery groaning and clanking in a nightmarish symphony. The shadows coalesced into solid forms, the spirits of the past drawn to the scene of their eternal torment, their cries mingling with the wind. Jamie, holding the pendant aloft, felt a surge of energy coursing through him, the spirits of the mill lending their power to his cause. As Elena continued the incantations, he approached the core of the spectral mill, where the darkness was densest, the air vibrating with malevolent force. With a final cry, Jamie plunged the pendant into the heart of the phantom mill. A blinding light exploded from the point of contact, radiating outwards in a shockwave that tore through the fabric of the mill's existence. The ground shook as if the earth itself was breaking apart, the ley lines beneath them flaring with released energy. The mill's apparition disintegrated, the light consuming it piece by piece, erasing the darkness and purging the land of its blight. The spirits, 
their chains of suffering broken, ascended in a luminous cascade, their faces marked with peace at last. As the light receded, the meadow was restored, more vibrant and alive than ever, the air filled with the fresh scent of growth. The ley lines, now cleansed, pulsed with a gentle, nurturing glow, their energy no longer a conduit for darkness. Jamie, exhausted but at peace, felt a gentle touch on his shoulder and turned to see the ethereal form of his mother, her smile radiant. You freed them, my son, she whispered, her voice fading, and you've healed the land. With those final words, she too ascended, her form dissolving into light, joining the spirits she had fought so hard to save. Elmsworth, its curse lifted, slowly healed from the scars of its past. Jamie and Elena, hailed as heroes, dedicated themselves to guarding the ley lines, ensuring that the darkness that once thrived at the old mill would never return. The story of the mill became a legend in Elmsworth, a tale of darkness, courage, and redemption. And while peace returned to the town, the memory of the mill's legacy remained, a reminder of the thin line between light and darkness, and the eternal vigilance required to maintain the balance. <laughs>